Hey, my name is Amesa with The Root School. Today we're going to be talking about binoculars and how to use them more accurately for getting good identification of birds. So for binocular parts, we've got the objective lenses, the eyepieces, which on some binoculars are adjustable. We've got the center hinge, which adjusts based on where your eyes line up. And then we've got the center focus wheel, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you're going to use that to get the focus based on the distance you're looking. What's important though that a lot of folks don't pay attention to is the diopter or the right eye focus wheel and this is going to make it so that the binoculars are adjusted to your personal eyesight and comfortability. So to get the diopter or right eye focus wheel dialed in you want to pull up your binoculars and pick a stationary object. Once you have a stationary object, you're going to use the center focus wheel to get it as focused as you can. And a lot of times, especially if they're new binoculars, you're going to find that even though it's at as focused as it can be, it's still got a little bit of blur to it, which is where the diopter comes in. So once you have your stationary object focused in with the center focus, you're going to adjust the diopter, really small movements with it, uh, but you're going to dial in that focus just that little bit more to get a crisp, clean image. With binoculars, you're going to find that they have come in different measurements. There are 6x32s, 8x32s, 8x42s, 10x50s, 10x42s. And what that means is the first number, 6, 8, 10, whatever it is, that's referring to the specific magnification scale. So my binoculars are 8 by 42s, which means it's going to pull in an object eight times closer to me than what I'm actually at. The second number is referring specifically to the measurements of the objective lens, and what that provides is the field of view. So an 8 by 32 is going to have a narrower field of view, but the same magnification as these binoculars. The 8 by 42 has a slightly wider field of view, and in turn also ends up receiving uh, the ability to pick up more light. Trying to walk through the woods with a pair of 10 by 50s is going to be, they're both big but they're also going to be with a huge magnification that can be challenging to use in shrubby habitats. Whether you're out in the Midwest with big rolling fields or you're out on the ocean looking at seabirds uh, the 10 by 50s are going to be helpful in those situations. Here in New England, the 8 by 42s are my absolute favorite size because they do have a fairly wide uh, field of vision, but they're also adjusted well for picking up birds in close proximity and being able to pull in the identifying markers that you're looking for a lot more clearly than having the whole bird take up your field of vision. So with binocular use in the field, we talked about using the diopter adjustment and the method of picking a stationary object to adjust your focuses. Now, with using the binoculars though, it's gonna be much the same tactic, though with birds, the object is not stationary most of the time. So the way that is most effective for getting your binoculars to be of assistance is to not just bring your binoculars up and be fishing around in your field of view trying to find this small bird in a tree. It's going to be much more helpful to keep your eyes locked on your target, what you're trying to observe, and bringing the binoculars up to meet them. And you'll find that by doing it this way, when the binoculars do reach your eyes, it'll take very minimal movement adjustments to get the object in your field of view if it's not already. So once you have the bird in your field of view, you're gonna use the center focus wheel to make sure that you've got it focused in. Just by bringing your binoculars up does not necessarily mean that what you're looking at is gonna be in focus. It may be too far, too close. So making the adjustment with the center focus wheel will bring in and dial in the detail and clarity of the object you're trying to look at. Once you have it dialed in, it makes it a lot easier to start identifying wing bars, eye rings, belly speckling, 
stripe patterns, whatever it may be, whatever the bird may be, it helps dial in the detail that you're looking for. So when I'm out birding, uh, I tend to spend a lot of my time in wide angle vision and I'm looking mostly for movement patterns, uh, disruptions in tree branches, and oftentimes that's keyed in based on something I hear. So say I hear a bird I don't recognize, but I want to see it. I pinpoint roughly where I was hearing the bird from and I do wide angle vision to try and find motion within that area. Once I've got a rough idea of where the bird is perched or singing from, that's when I'm going to bring my binoculars up and get into focus. If you're looking to buy binoculars for birding, uh, there's a wide range of prices and styles that you can get. My personal favorite is uh, going for something that is durable and waterproof. Uh, Nikon Monarchs are a pretty affordable binocular while still having a lot of durability. Uh, Vortex binoculars are another brand that is in the same category as that. Cheap binoculars are going to work fine, uh, but if you're doing real aggressive walking through brush and pushing through backcountry situations, they may not last as long as something like a Nikon Monarch. Uh, you can end up spending thousands of dollars on binoculars if that's the place that you're in and that's what you want. That's fine. They're going to be nice, crisp, clear uh, binoculars. However, I personally would not want to be pushing through thick material and aggressive landscapes with really expensive binoculars. So I, again, really appreciate the Nikon Monarchs for their durability. Uh, and they have a wide range of size options in terms of magnification and field of view. Once you have a new pair of binoculars, I personally really like to put a little bit of bright flagging on the binoculars themselves so that if I do set them down, maybe I'm having a snack on the side of a trail somewhere, it's going to make it a lot easier to not lose them. You're going to find them, see them on the ground a lot easier. A lot of binoculars that you get these days are camouflaged, which is a cool idea, but it also makes it a lot easier to lose them if you set them down. Uh, so a little bit of flagging can make a big difference in that, and it's not going to disrupt the bird's attention on you at all. So binoculars are not a necessary component to birding, however they are a really helpful tool. A field guide is definitely going to be a very helpful tool in terms of working through the identification process but often being able to see the details of the bird you're looking at, binoculars are gonna make the difference of being able to pinpoint which details are important for the identification process. Using a camera is an option too, but often is, has its own set of challenges. Birding by sound is definitely a strong component to birding. However, if you're just getting started and learning birds for the first time, one of the best ways to learn a bird's song is to watch the bird make that song. Uh, if you hear a bird that you don't know and you are able to pinpoint its location, using your binoculars to watch it sing its song will put an image in your mind each time you hear that song in the future. So the binoculars end up being really helpful to get that image and help you work through the process of identifying by sound, even though these are based on sight. I hope this video helps you out with picking a new pair of binoculars and getting them dialed in for your own vision. Happy birding.